Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. It's that time of the week where I go over my um, takeaways from each game in the NFL this past week and I give like a one um, set and ten liner for each game. Let's start off with the Thursday Night Football game last week between the Bears and the Commanders. The headliner, winless, no more. Chicago was playing inspired football. Not sure if it's because Bears legend Dick Buckus um, died. Um, that would obviously be a good reason why he was one of the best not only Chicago players of all time, the best NFL players of all time. He was that good. Um, rest in peace for him. Um, but wherever the inspiration came from, it worked. Um, from start to finish, they put out on a show, especially with wide receiver DJ Moore, uh, which, by the way, he was on a couple of my fantasy teams. So, good for me there. Um, but now for Washington, their secondary has been bad all year. And when Washington's solid pass rush can't get home, it can get ugly. The problem is Sam Howell is not an elite quarterback, and, and he can't overcome a bad defense. So we'll see if they can rebound from this. Odds are, probably not. Jags versus Bills. The Jags are back in town. The Jags have looked funky to begin the season, but their two games in London, which is like a second home to them, um, has basically won them two in a row, and the offense finally doesn't look bad anymore. Lawrence is making good passes. The play calling's better. You know, Ridley stepping up, ETN stepping up. Also, the defense, to my surprise, played really well the past two weeks as well. Um... This Jacks team, if they can continue to play like this, now they can win a division like everyone thought and make some noise at the playoffs like everyone thought. Titans versus Colts. Minshew Magic does it again. Once again, Richardson got injured and Minshew came in and delivers it close to a win like he did last time. Now, since Richardson will be out for at least a few weeks this time, and it won't be short term, we'll see how long the Minshew Magic can last. Saints versus Patriots. Time for a reset. Bill Belichick was right in his post-game conference when he said the team needs to do a reset at this point in the season. He's not wrong about that. But the part that he is wrong about is that that restarting should include him, at the very least not being in charge of personnel anymore, if not, then just straight up forcing him to retirement. And the Patriots need to rip the baby off, go with a young, upcoming coordinator, um, like a Kellen Moore or something, and to promote them to head coach, and then draft a QB in the first round, since they're going to have a top 10 pick at this point. Um, and his division, you know, with Buffalo being good, Miami being good, Jets going to be good in the near future. Like, that's how, that's how you're going to get out of this mess. Ravens versus Steelers. Stop monking around. Ravens brought in a new offense coordinator to change the offense, and it has looked exactly the same, if not worse. Now, receivers are dropping a lot of balls, like one of the most in the league, and then Lamar has fumbling issues, forced turnovers. That, that's not all on him. I understand that, but the offense was supposed to be way more dynamic and just frankly look different the Greg Roman offense for the past few years, and it does not look good at all. If things do not get fixed, then it's not going to look good for Munkin. Um, Texans versus Falcons. Not so fast. Houston still has question marks. Last week I said Houston may be for real winning this division, but then this loss happens. The defense made Ritter look like a, a good quarterback, and they gave him, you know, a two-minute drive to complete, which set up the winning field goal. That's an issue. And on offense, they just settled for too many field goals. While the Texans are better than given credit for, it looks like things will stop to go through Jacksonville. Even though Houston already beat them earlier in the year. Panthers versus Lions. Lions are biting kneecaps. The Lions, despite no Amari Say Brown, no Jamar Gibbs, still a dominant and took care of business against one of the worst teams in the league. This is a good sign for a team that wants to be contender. Because if they would have screwed around and barely won this game, then we're going to have our doubts. But since they took care of business like a good team should do, it gives you hope as a Lions fan. Giants versus Dolphins. Tua felt like a no show -a. Tua made some good plays, but had three bad picks, including a pick six um, near the goal line. If Tua is perfect, then the offense is perfect. But if Tua is throwing picks, then it allows for better teams to take advantage of that and neutralize this explosive offense. So Tua has to play better going forward. Also, losing run Ricky running back, Ashne for a few weeks does not help, although they do have that, that position. Bengals versus Cardinals. Will the real Joe Burrow please stand up? Joe Burrow was, one, was off the injury report this past week, and you told him he's good now. Well, that was on display this past Sunday. He was able to run around, make plays, look like the old Joe Burrow that we all know. Um, and since, you know, not only the line's bad, but since the defense, for some reason, continues to be bad this year, if this Joe Burrow that played on Sunday can be present going forward, then the Bengals can still be in the playoff hunt. Eagles versus Rams. Eagles fly away from the Rams. It was close in the first half, but in the second half, like I just said with the Lions, like good teams do, they insert their dominance and they take over as the Rams could do nothing in the second half. The Eagles pull away for the victory. We'll see if they can continue doing that going forward um, because the Eagles do, do have flaws they have to fix right now. 
Jets versus Broncos. Hackett for the win. The Jets players got the win for Nathaniel Hackett after Sean Payton called him out this offseason. And what's crazy is that in Denver, by this stage last year, Hackett and the, the team under Hackett was better than the team currently is under Sean Payton right now. I'm not saying that will be the case going forward, but as of this year, that's the case, which is crazy to think about. Chiefs versus Vikings. Chiefs Kingdom raids Vikings territory. The Chiefs once again was, you know, good on offense and even though the Vikings had some success on offense, the turnovers, which has been a thing for them, theme for them all season, and the bad O line play do them again. And now to make matters worse, star receiver Justin Jefferson goes on IR. So I know the Vikings want to keep it rolling, but with Jefferson now especially, they should really consider starting to trade cousins now, since he's on last year's contract and start the process like Play the Rick quarterback draft in the fifth round, Jaron Hall. See what you got there. If you got something, you can roll with him next year. And if not, then you know to get a quarterback and since you'll probably have a top 10 pick. Um, Cowboys versus 49ers. What can go wrong will go wrong. I hate to quote Stephen A. Smith here, but the Cowboys once again prove that is true. Sadly, Devontae Turpin, the electrifying kickoff returner, backup receiver, and then um, the star linebacker, Leighton Van Esch, both have injuries. They'll keep them out for probably four weeks or so, so that's not good for the Cowboys. Um, but once again, just Dak looked awful throwing three picks, not doing anything on offense. And then what did shock me this game was how bad the defense was. I was definitely not expecting that. Um, I expected better for that side of the ball. But sadly, the Cowboys will be battling for a wild card spot once again. And then from last night's game, Packers versus Raiders. Not so lovely. Jordan, Jordan Love continued his struggles as he had no touchdowns and threw for three picks, although one of them was just a tip ball. But um, the run game was a little more existent last week, despite no Aaron Jones, which is good. But like I mentioned last week, the offensive line injuries is a big deal. And for an average QB at best like Jordan Love, that's going to be hard to overcome. Good thing they have a bye week this week because they need it. Um, thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel talking about me. Um, also, for college football fans, real quick, I post on my LinkedIn page my updated bowl projections, so make sure to look at that. Thank you very much. You all know, have a wonderful day.